So we want to make sure that SMAP is enabled and enforced correctly. So let's execute the test SMAP binary. Let's take note of the actual address on the heap that is in New Zealand and that is marked as executable. Now let's go on the uh, debugger side. We're going to set a breakpoint on the NT create transaction function. Now we go back to the actual binary execution and we're going to hit a key to actually trigger the syscall. I've done it. As you can see, we don't see the cursor anymore because the VM is hanging. Also, we see the breakpoint hits. We can see we reached the NT pre transaction syscall implementation from test map. This is the actual memory in New Zealand. We can see all the knobs as well as the in three. We can show it as assembly. Now let's look at the value of the CR4 register. If we count the number of, of, of bytes, we have 8, 16, 17, 18, 90, 20. So the higher one bit is actually the one for SMAP. This corresponds to the one here. So if we set CR4 to just this value, it will actually unset the SMAP feature. Now let's set the insertion pointer to the heap address. Now if we continue execution, let's see what happened. We can see we're executing our username area from kernel mode. So SMEP was successfully disabled. Now let's reset the insertion pointer to the beginning of the heap area in username. Also let's restore CR4 to its original value. Here we have re-enabled SMEP. Let's see what happens in the debugger continue execution. As you can see, an exception is triggered, more specifically the FC exception. If we look at the actual MSDN documentation, it means we are trying to execute non-executable memory, which means SMAP was successfully unprocessed. As an exercise, you could actually now try to check other mitigations using the same kind of techniques.